All right, welcome to this next lesson. And this lesson will be about some more spring boot theories, just taking a deeper dive into how spring, how spring boot works and some other things that we need to know. All right. The main portion of Spring Boot that we need to understand is auto configuration. Auto configuration is the way that Spring Boot provides its um, speed and ease of use to the developer. So Spring Boot does auto configuration through the use of its dependencies. So Spring Boot has dedicated dependencies that it uses um, to bootstrap the application. So it is even possible to get a Spring, Spring Boot application up and running without writing any code. You really just throw some dependencies on the class path and you can literally run your Spring Boot application. However, it won't be useful. I mean, your application won't do anything, but it will run. Depending on which dependencies you put on the class path, Spring Boot will um, detect those dependencies and auto and auto configure them. So if you put a database dependency on the class path, then Spring Boot will automatically look for you to provide your database URL, your username, your password for the user that's going to be accessing the database um, and things like that. So with some with some dependencies, you have to add some um, configuration to it in order for it to work. So in some cases, you can just add a dependency and Spring Boot will run fine because everything is auto configured. But with certain dependencies, you need to have a uh, some extra configuration done before you can actually use that dependency. Um, there is a way to disable auto configuration. Uh, we will not be doing that in this course, but thought I should mention it. Also, there are some dependencies that you actually have to enable before you can use their functionality um, because Spring Boot may need to scan certain um, packages and things like that. Uh, we will also not be using this in this course, um, so you can always Google those things and figure them out. Next is a very main, I mean, a very core feature of spring in general and that is dependency injection dependency injection is a way to loosely couple your classes from each other so the way spring does this is through the use of a specialized class known as a bean so in our case our beans will be um like singletons so basically to for an example if you have a class that is say an employee and an employee has another class within it that is a department you can um instead of actually having to instantiate a new department each time uh, with the new keyword you can actually just inject a department's um, class into it that's already been instantiated like in like a singleton um so that way it's more memory efficient and also it's um, it's easier to manage. So configuring Spring Beans is very easy in Spring Boot. There are no XML files like I told you before. Um, we will be doing this and it will be all in actual Java classes is where our configurations will take place and it will be extremely easy to get an application up and running. All right. So when this, the beans are instantiated, they are put into the spring container. The spring container is the core of the spring framework. Everything in our application that has to do with spring will be inside of this container as our application is running. So our whole application context is inside of this con spring container. So the container is used to actually instantiate our beans it will auto wire them into our classes um, for example that department's bean would be auto wired into our employees class um, it will configure them which either using auto configuration or the configuration that we specify depending on 
which one it needs to use. Um, it will also manage the beans throughout their full life cycle. So from when the bean is instantiated all the way till when it's picked up by the garbage collector, this spring framework will handle and do everything for those beans. Um, the application context is the main interface for accessing the spring container. So the application context pretty much is where we will put our beans in at runtime. So basically the application context is the interfaces, how you get to the spring container, how you interact with the spring container. So we, when we're using Spring Boot, we don't actually directly um, access the application context. Um, Spring Boot will do that for us. We just, um, the way we do it, we will not need to actually access the application context within the code. It will be done all behind the scenes. Um, I'm just explaining the theory so you know how it works under the hood. The pattern we will be using for creating our REST API will be the MVC pattern. Um, I'm sure you've heard of it, the model view controller. This design pattern is, for, uh, is used for creating user interfaces and it divides the codes into three separate parts. These three parts are do completely different things. However, they all work together. You can't have one without the other. So this is how we will use to, I mean, this is what we will use to create our API. Um, the goal of the MVC pattern is to take user input, process the input, and provide a result to the user. So the model portion of the MVC pattern is a representation of an object. So in our case, this will be our database entries that will be our object so we will be manipulating um, this object by the user so the user will make a call to the rest api the uh, rest api will uh, manage will manipulate the model and then that's where the model comes in into this point in our case the model is just a uh, pojo which stands for plain old java object which is just any Java object you can think of. It just has fields, getters and setters, um, and some constructors, basic constructors. The view portion of the MVC pattern is a representation of the model. So basically this is what will be, what will be visualized on the front end. So whenever you're on a page and say you put in like say you have an account and you're changing your password that visual view of you changing your password the three text fields where you put your old current password in your new password and then you confirm your new password that would be the view the model would be what's on the back end that stores that information once you hit the send uh when, once you submit the form um of course, in our in this course, we will not be implementing the view because we're building a REST service and the REST service has no view component. We are not doing any front end development in this course. The controller is, handles all of the logic for how the model should be changed. So when a user um, sends a REST request to our service, it will hit the controller. The request hits the controller. The controller handles all logic that goes into um, changing that model the way every, whatever it needs to be. Whether it's persisting something into the model or retrieving the model, the controller is where all the action happens. Here is my pretty ugly visual visualization of the MVC model. You have a user that uses the controller, that's where he makes the rest call. Then the controller changes the model in some shape or form. Um, and then the model updates the view. The view is what the user is seeing. So that's how the flow of operation goes. It, uh, the user uses the controller, the controller changes the model, the model updates the view and the user sees the view. 
So that's how this will work. How all of this fits together. So the reason I'm telling you all of this stuff is because we will be using Spring Boot to make a REST API using the MVC design pattern. We'll utilize Spring Boot's auto configuration feature to streamlighten the coding process and it will make the coding process very simple. And in order to take advantage of the auto configuration, we must configure some of the beans that can be injected into the Spring container via the application context. This is why I explained to you what the application context was and how Spring Beans are um, fit into that. So all of this has a reason. That's why I'm explaining all of this. This is everything I'm explaining here we are going to use. The thing is you will not really see a lot of this happening. This is what happens um, behind the scenes. So when we start programming, um, I'm going to explain to you where things are happening, happening at and you will not see them because the part that we're going to write is going to be so simple compared to what's all happening that you're going to uh, it's, it's going to be hard to see that this is happening. So I just wanted to give you background on how all of this will fit together and why I'm actually explaining this to you. All right. With these beans in place, our application will be much easier to write and manage. So you will see how easy it is once we actually get started. Um, we are almost done getting through all these theory videos and explaining and explaining. We will be coding very soon. We just have to get through one more video. And that is why I choose to use Linux um, as my um, development workspace. So that will be the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.